So today we'll begin with um, the meditation first, and then I will be um, speaking a little bit about uh, the Mangala Sutta, the, the, the discourse on the blessings, and uh, this wonderful discourse that the Buddha gave. Um, a very wonderful advice to uh, the people who were living the house life, the lay life, uh, and uh, how to uh, what what is happiness and how to enjoy the highest blessings uh, while living uh, like everybody else, not being a monk. <laughs> and uh, it's in fact. The first, uh, the first parita, the first sutta that uh, begins the uh, book of protections that the monks have to uh, commit to memory and chant uh, very often. And so this is a very, uh, very popular sutta and uh, tonight you will get to hear it. And so without further ado, I invite you to simply relax and smile. If there was any little tension in your body accumulated throughout the day or the week, <clears throat> simply try to relax, calm down the tension. It's when we take a little bit of time or stillness, the calming down, that we see that there is tension, a little bit of tension, and then we can let go. And smile. Not really judging any sounds, any squirrels fighting in the trees, just calming down, not holding on to anything that's happening at any of the sense doors, any of the sense faculties. If something arises, particular sense objects, comes in contact with its particular sense, if there's any contact happening at any of the sense doors, and any feeling arising from that contact making sure that we are just letting it go, letting it be, relaxing and smiling.
Let go of any thoughts that are happening in your mind right now. They might not completely fade away right away. But do not engage in them. Just take a step back. The mind doesn't need to be thinking all the time. It can also be enjoying peace and calm. And whenever you feel it is appropriate for you, you can bring up and generate this feeling of love inside your heart. This warm, lush feeling in the center of your chest. And allow it to run its course through your whole body. pervade your whole body with love. Radiating. from your heart to the tip of your fingers, from your heart to the tip of your toes, to the tip of your head, Of course, you can use an object if the feeling gets weak, if it goes away, if the mind gets distracted a lot. You can use something to uplift the mind, remembering someone that you love, perhaps a small animal, or perhaps a good memory somewhere in nature that you've been, that you really love. You feel love for all of life. Any of these things you can use to help you.
And whenever the mind gets distracted, noticing the tension, and that is wisdom, noticing the tension that arises with the wanderings of the mind, sharpening our faculty of wisdom. And as soon as we see this, to let it go, relax, to ease, soothe the mind, to come back to love with a smile. This is wise practice. And to maintain the feeling of love and the smile as long as we can. When the mind wanders, no need to judge, no need to have an opinion about it. It doesn't matter. The mind just wanders. Simply let go, smile, and love again. And whenever you feel like you have enough love within that you can share some, simply allow it to flow out, to shine in all directions, in front, in the back, to your left and to your right, above and below without forcing, without controlling. More like a bucket that is full to the brim, like the Buddha said. And a strong man would come and push it one way or another. It would just flow out right away. In this same way, without forcing so much, Allowing the fullness of this feeling of love to overflow, to shine out in all directions, naturally.
and smile. This will help you. If you notice any tension arising in your body, simply let go, relax. Notice how the tension in your body is related to the activity in the mind. When you relax and let go of the physical tension, the mind also releases. And so in the beginning stages of this meditation, when tension arises in the body, and we let go, we relax. Mental clarity increases. Awareness opens up. And we are slowly training our minds to be free to stop clinging. This is a progressive release. going back to the love, boundless. One of the most powerful vehicles of liberation. cleansing of the mind through love.
and take delight in this feeling of boundless love. This completely blameless happiness that is always accessible to us. This we always have the choice. We can always bring it up. It cannot be taken away. going directly to the meaning, to the heart, to the purpose. Do not try to visualize anything, not to try to visualize the feeling of love going in the universe or anything, simply knowing, feeling the feeling of love and feeling it unrestricted boundless. Fully allowing
And if you notice that you're analyzing or thinking about the feeling too much, relax, let go, smile, don't take it too seriously, just love, smile, love, smile, love. Relax, smile, love, repeat. Sutang ekang samayang barawa Sawati ang wiharati Jetawane atatnap pindika sa arame Atako devata Anyatara abikanta yaratia Abikanta wana kewala kapang jet wanna obasetwa yena bhagava tanu pasankami upasankami tuwa bhagavan tang abiwade tuwa ekaman tang atasi ekaman tang titta kosa devata Bhagavan Tangataya Ajabasi Bahu Deva Manu Sacha Mangalani Achintayum Akankamana Sotanam Bruhi Mangalamutamang Sewana Chabalanang Panditancha Sewana Puja cha puja neya nang etang mangalamutamang. Patiru pede sawa so cha pube cha kata punyata. Atasama pani di cha etang mangalamutamang. Bahu sachan cha si pancha vinayo cha susikito. Subhasita cha ya wa cha etang mangalamutamang. Mata pitu patanang puttadara sa sangaho. Nakula cha kamanta etang mangalamutamang. Dhanan cha dhammachariya cha ariya satcha dasanang. Anawajani kamani etang mangalamutamang. Arati virati papa majjapanna cha sangyamo. Appamado cha dhamme suvetang mangalamutamang. Garavo cha niwato cha santutti cha katanyuta. Kalena dhamma sawanang etang mangalamutamang. Kanti cha so wacha satta samana nan cha dasanang. 
Tapocha Brahmachari Achari Sachada Sanang Nibana Sachakiri Achaitang Mangalamutamang Putasa Lokada Mehi Chitang Yasana Kampati Asokang Virajang Kemang Etang Mangalamutamang Tadi sani katuana sabbatama parajita sabbatama sotinga chanti tante sang mangalamutamang sadu 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 carrying this wonderful feeling that we've cultivated for about half an hour. Simply allow yourself to lend an ear and carry on with the love in your heart. And I will continue with the English uh, version of what you just heard, which is the Mangala Sutta. And this is the discourse on the blessings. And the meaning in English uh, is this. Thus have I heard at one time, the awakened one was residing at Sawati in Jetta's Grove at Anathapindika's monastery. Then a certain deva at the waning of the night, shining with surpassing splendor, filling the entire Jetta's grove, approached the exalted one and paid loving respect. While standing on the side, the deva addressed the exalted one in verses. Many devas and humans have pondered about happiness, seeking for well-being. Pray, Bhante, what is the highest blessing? And the Buddha replied, Not associating with the careless, associating with the wise, revering those worthy of esteem, this is the highest blessing. Living in a pleasant location, having performed merits in the past, aspiring for righteousness for oneself. This is the highest blessing. Being knowledgeable and skilled, disciplined and competent. Being easily spoken to. This is the highest blessing. Attending to one's mother and father, caring for one's wife and children not having a disturbing profession, this is the highest blessing. Giving and living in truth, caring for one's relatives, acting blamelessly, this is the highest blessing. Staying away and abstaining from all wrong, refraining from intoxicating things, being steadfast in truth, this is the highest blessing. Being respectful and unpretentious, content and grateful, hearing the Dhamma in good time, this is the highest blessing. Being patient and gentle, visiting monks, conversing on the Dhamma in good time, this is the highest blessing being intent, living the righteous life, seeing the awakened understandings, the Four Noble Truths, experiencing Nibbāna, this is the highest blessing. Touched by the ways of the world, with a mind that remains unshaken, sorrowless, 
quenched and serene. This is the highest blessing. Doing here as such, everywhere undefeated they go, abounding in happiness. For them this is the highest blessing. And this wonderful discourse, um, mainly to, uh, to everyone, but mainly to, that was re given to uh, those who were living the house life, to know, to remember all these wonderful ways, these wholesome ways of where really true happiness lies. And uh, quite... Uh, quite wonderfully, the Buddha begins with wise friendship, Kalyana Mittata, which is very important on the path, which he uh, stresses quite often, is that, um, well, this paying attention to who we are surrounding ourselves with, that does not mean creating divisions within the people. That's not uh, the way it should be seen. This simply means knowing where, where wholesome friendship is and leaning towards this. That means, well, if, if uh, someone will... Uh, you know, um, be uh, an example of um, mistreating others and uh, gambling and hurting and um, lying. Well, the the Buddha said also, it, even if we don't do it ourselves, it's like. Um, like a snake um, going going through a pile of dung, <laughs> it's still <laughs> it's still really it it will the stink will will get on you <laughs> even if you don't do it. <laughs> and so I think it's it's quite the simile there, but uh, the the snake going through the dung. But um, uh, this is what he compared it with. And even if you don't do these actions yourself, uh, if, if you associate with such people that, you know, do, do, do these things, then even if you don't do it, you, that's the reputation that you get. That's what, that's what, um, and this is not going to help you, not going to help anyone on their own path to more happiness and helping others. When we understand that, in fact, virtue and helping, um, generosity is for our, our own happiness as well as others because these two things are not separate. Uh, we learn to move away from these unwise friendship, that unwise friendship. And in fact, it is by moving away from unwise friendship that in fact people can also get a very precious reflection <laughs> on what we um, what we are willing to to live with, and what we consider wisdom, and so also s choosing goodness, choosing good actions, good good livelihood, good speech. Uh, respectful behavior is in fact uh, voting. <laughs> it's always, um, even, even if we think sometimes that it doesn't really have a big impact, well, um, this is how it begins and this is how we do. And then others also get to see that, well, yeah, we're ready to stand for what we 
believe is good and not only believe but we can see and we know through our own wisdom and knowledge that uh, holding the virtues for example not killing not stealing not cheating not lying is uh, is a good thing to do and it is helpful and so it is good to stand strong and firm in these things and so not to be just shaken off all the time and wise friendship will also help us fortify virtue fortify mental development get more established and stronger and by being stronger in the Dhamma we can help even more we can be um, we can be an even bigger island for beings for them to get a grip <laughs> and interestingly mentioning living in a pleasant or a suitable location patirupe uh, desawaso is um, is physical yes in a way but also uh, like Bhantiji was mentioning in one of his talk um, it's not to forget that being born or simply to have to come in contact with Dhamma with virtue wholesome mental development and liberation um, the teaching of the Buddha simply to be in touch or to live in a place where we can be in touch with uh, such profound and beautiful teaching that is that is uh, the suitable location <laughs> where there's uh, solitude and all the you know all the the requisites to uh, practice all the all the supporting conditions for peace, peace of mind, and happiness that is wholesome. Physically is very important, but also uh, uh, in our hearts. Uh, we need food for the body, but we also need food for uh, wholesome mind development. And so to always... Um, to have a place where we can practice, where we can uh, have a community who is practicing, who, where we can talk with other people that are practicing. This is also uh, one of the highest blessings. And of course, the Buddha's teaching was, is very, um, centered around this one thing that is, this is a world of causality. And so everything that we do and everything that we will do is all from a cause and it all starts from a condition and this is uh, part of what we call wisdom to understand karma action and reaction cause and effect and these uh, this uh, very important aspect which pulls us out of nihilism where we could think that oh there's no there's no real purpose to anything really because we can't this is hard to see it's hard to see that all of your actions have um, a consequence or an effect whether it's in the near future or whether it's in the far future but the way that we think now was conditioned by previous causes and whatever these causes were is the mental buildup that we acquired today and our perspective of reality right now 
is very much built upon perceptions and ideas and views that we've built up from the past and from our experiences. And when we align with the Dhamma, we, we are creating very wholesome conditions, very wholesome causes for the present and also for the future. And this is what the Buddha says, Pubbe cha kata punyata. And this is uh, Pube is in previously having done kata uh, punyata is um, having done merits in the past, good deeds. And merit is anything that purifies the mind. That's what uh, really merit is, is these actions. That's why, why are we practicing generosity? Yes, because it's helping others. But it is also purifying the mind. We are letting go. We are letting go of our own ego to serve the greater good. And this feels great. <laughs> this feels very good inside. And so this is, this is just a win-win situation, to be really honest. And um, as we learn to cultivate this, we really learn to build our own happiness very strongly and purify our own minds. When we give, we're not holding on to things. We're actually letting go, which is called nikkama. It's another, it's another, it's a parami and it's also the wise attitude, uh, sankapo, which is a factor of the path. And this is an, an, an actual thing to develop, is the ability to relinquish and um, this is why, um, this is the, what monks take to another level, but uh, because it's not, this is uh, often when people read this sutta and think, well, why, if you become a monk, how can you uh, um, take care of your parents and your family and your relatives and all that stuff? Well, in fact, this is uh, an interesting point of view in the West because uh, we associate, uh, since we don't have a very strong background in, uh, well, in Buddhism for one thing, but in uh, this, this, uh, this spiritual calling, I would say, um, we, we tend to think that it's kind of a... Um, uh, basically taking the easy path or something, but <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not easy to relinquish everything. The fact is that most people are not, and so, <laughs> and, um, which is not necessarily um, a bad thing, but simply um, that to remember that, it, yes, it is, and mind uh, often can find the excuses to say, oh, well, that's, that's just the easy path. Or, but uh, it's, the truth is, is that it's, it's not actually easy to relinquish. <laughs> and it's not actually easy to devote your whole life to, to, to goodness, to the spiritual path. And... Whether you're a layperson or whether you're a monk, that doesn't, that doesn't matter, really. Uh, just being a monk is another, is another thing. But uh, it doesn't mean that it cannot be taken to a very profound level on the, in the house life also. In fact, uh, there's many, many wonderful uh, examples. And... The more, the more we, in fact, relinquish our, our own ego is tremendous generosity because then we also, this is uh, allowing us to free our minds and we, we constantly cultivate our mind to be free, to be constantly giving, to be constantly leaning, inclining towards openness, generosity, 
giving, relinquishing, opening up. And this is very central to the Buddhist teaching. It's very, very important. It's not just like you know, the monk is saying, oh, just give all your money away <laughs> to the Sangha. <laughs> no, it's just make sure you're not tightening your mind. Make sure you're not, you don't become stingy with the things that you have. Just make sure that you're always be, you're free. You're always free. Your mind, your heart is free, always. Because this is, this is the easy path, is to cling, to cling, to cling, to cling, to cling. And in fact, we don't see it building up, but it does. <laughs> and it's sneaky. And so that's why we build awareness. That's why we practice uh, meditation. And that's why we practice uh, mental development. And to see the tension, to see when it arises, when there's anger coming up. It doesn't mean to, to lose yourself completely out of anger. It, it can also be just impatience. And you've probably been around impatient uh, people once in a while and you know how that feels to be around someone that's uh, impatient, not really listening, uh, who doesn't really care. Uh, it doesn't feel great. <laughs> and so um, this is also these mental states we think, you know, we think, oh, that's it's not important, but it is so important. It is the highest importance because if we don't take care of our minds, you know, uh, what's it all for? <laughs> if we get angry, if we get impatient, if we, we get jealous, first it's not good for us and it's not good for the people around us. And it's like um, we do all these things to clean the body and like every day, how many days would you skip? Uh, that's an interesting, uh, interesting uh, image is how, how many days would you skip taking a shower <laughs> and how many days would you skip meditation well it's it's interesting because it's kind of the same <laughs> but we're not we just get used to the the way the mind stinks <laughs> And we don't really, uh, we, we just work with it. We just work around it. Like someone that doesn't shower for a long time and just kind of gets this, you know, when you go camping, you just like, oh, okay, like I'll just take it on and you just forget about it. <laughs> well, it's the same thing with the mind. And we don't learn it in school. We don't learn it, you know, so that's what happens. So washing the mind is also very, very important. It's not just also, it's, it's the first thing. <laughs> but um, so it gets overlooked sometimes because many, many, so many problems, you know, that's the, the root of all problems is, is, is in the way we, we think, in the way we perceive reality. If the mind is happy, if the mind is pure, and it doesn't need anything at that point, it doesn't like. The external situation, it's just an excuse. It's, it's, it's not, it doesn't actually really matter. What matters is in there. And so if what's in there is happy, then everything is happy. And so we can um, remember this, and this is what the, the Buddha is, is saying in this wonderful discourse. And, um, remembering all these these ways of uh, finding happiness that are in line with the Dhamma and when I say in line with Dhamma Dhamma means here righteousness it just means virtue it means generosity it means compassion it means love uh, this is not really a religious term it's simply just what it is it's uh, wisdom wisdom and compassion and generosity. And of course, 
many, many, many things. So this could go on for a very long time. Um, but I will conclude and um, simply um, finishing with, uh, of course, speaking about seeing the awakened understanding, the Four Noble Truths, and experiencing Nibbana is um, the highest uh, at the end of the sutta, which is what he finishes with. And Nibbana is not necessarily um, this great big fireworks uh, cracking in the mind when someone enters uh, some kind of special state. It's also, Nibbana also means simply uh, the cooling down, the quenching. Uh, and so every time we have anger or tension, a, a tensed state that arises, to see it with wisdom and to let it go, this is Nibbana also. And the four awakened understanding is, is what I just described. Is, it is connected to Nibbana, in fact, the Nibbana element. There's two kinds of nibbana. There's the mundane we, the mundane nibbana we experience in our own practice all the time. We get a little taste of release every time we see, we feel tension arising, and we let go of it. There's relief and there's joy happening. Well, this is also nibbana. It's not the end goal nibbana, but it's cultivating it. And this is getting us closer every time. And this is not in vain. This is always continually. And to see the awakened understandings, which is seeing tension when it arises, seeing its cause, well, it's the distraction, anger or jealousy or whatever unwholesome state, to let it go, to see the release. And the fourth is to know the path, to know how, know how to do to release that how to how do you do well first you do the virtue you don't kill you don't steal you don't lie then your mind is safe and then you abandon anger and you develop loving kindness <laughs> and that's the path in very brief <laughs> and that's how it works and this is the nibbana this is a very practical teaching very down to earth very straightforward and so, at the end, he says, touched by the ways of the world with a mind that remains unshaken, sorrowless, quenched, and serene, this is the highest blessing. When we continually practice in this way, whatever happens, whatever happens at the six sense doors or whatever the external situation, like I said, it, it doesn't matter anymore because we just practice the path to happiness because that's what the Buddha's teaching is, the path to happiness. <laughs> Not suffering, <laughs> the path to happiness. And when we cultivate this path, we become unshakable. Our happiness becomes unshakable because why? how could it shake? We speak the truth all the time. We don't lie. We don't steal. We don't hurt. We can be blamed. And when the mind comes from a place that knows that it cannot be blamed, and it is constantly practicing to let go, to accept, to love, to respond with compassion, to practice generosity, to be open, I mean, this kind of happiness is very, very strong and unshakable. So whatever we do in life, we can enjoy this wonderful happiness that just carries on. And so I wish you all a wonderful week. Good to see you all again. And uh, we will share our merits. May suffering ones be suffering free in the fear struck fearless be. 
May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha Sasana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.